Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, showdown slate between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the playoff relevant uh, New York Jets. Uh, Jacksonville at New York on a Thursday night, streamed on Amazon. And you'll see that the main thing I'm sharing on my screen right now is the AccuWeather. Now, this is for Syosset, but yet still... This is what we're getting tonight. It's going to be uh, it's going to be wind chill, uh, and it's going to be raining uh, pretty much all night. That's at least the the projection, and that's that. As usual, though, with with showdown slates, the, the it, it is less about finding the right plays and more about finding the right construction and the right rules to kind of put into your, into your lineup builders or, or into your hand built lineups, whatever. So like, for example, I, I, I list the, all the list of all the players who I find relevant. Okay. I ran projections for all of them and I rated them by sheets value score. And we're going to go through them all, but everybody has access to the same players on the slate. I don't think there's going to be any like, any complete hoodoo that kind of comes out of nowhere. It's just going to be a question of how you combine them and how uniquely you combine them. You know, if, if you could, if you could somehow find a way to play kind of a reasonable looking lineup that has only duped by 10 people, as opposed to one that's duped by 60, that's an incredible edge. And listen, there are things that you can do to make that work. You know, one of them is to, intentionally leave money on the table okay even though like a lot of people know to do that uh they don't do it as much as they should and uh so that remains something that you can do and and how much you intentionally leave on the table does kind of depend on the slate um and it does depend on how much you know projection equity you're you're, you're willing to give up um to do that but the more I, I, I play showdown and the more I look at showdown lineups and the more I just kind of analyze, the more I really respect the, the just extreme variance in a football game. You know, like you get one guy with a touchdown that's, as opposed to like falling down on the one yard line that literally breaks the whole slate. It's not it's not like the NBA where the guy's got to play like, you know, one, one three point shot doesn't determine the slate. In football, it's very, very event-driven. Um, and when you have a showdown slate where you literally only have one game to get fantasy points, to say that one lineup projects three points better than another one, so I have to play it, is a, is really a fool's game of, of analysis. You have to have a lot of vision, you know, and, and you have to accept the fact that you have to, you have to almost hate your lineups. When you put them in, you almost have to say, boy, I'm really playing this instead of that. Now, fortunately, I, I kind of like having um, Sabre Sim at my disposal for showdown slates. Uh, and the reason why is this is what a lot of people do is they'll use an optimizer. They'll set up rules. They'll say, OK, it makes sense to me that if X happens, then X shouldn't happen. Like, uh, I want to play Zonovan Knight, but if I play Zonovan Knight, then it stands to reason that you don't want to play Michael Carter, you know, two running backs, all right? And so they'll make a rule like that. Where what Sabersim does is it keeps track of all these correlation metrics on the side. You know, it says, okay, if Zonovan Knight does well, how much really does it impact um somebody like Michael Carter. You would think it impacts him negatively, but how much? And even even still, is that enough to overcome what could be a lack of ownership in lineups that are using the two of those together? So in, in showdown slates, you, you need something that will take your, your biases and will take your brain kind of out of it, I think. So that's why I like using optimizers for showdown slates um because no matter what you try you know when you try to get unique or whatever it is once you start putting your logical assessment of games in you're just naturally getting duped okay like 
everybody's thinking the same way. Okay, you know what I want to do? I'll tell you what's a good idea. I'm going to take Garrett Wilson. You want to know why? Because he's really good. Right? Let's let's do this. Okay, so so forget this. All right. Forget the weather. Forget all of it. Showdown captain mode. We're going to enter a lineup and we're going to try to get all the cheese. You know what's really good? Uh, Garrett Wilson. So we're going to put him in. You know what? You know what you need? Like if Garrett Wilson is going to do well, you know it's probably going to throw to throw the ball to him. Probably the quarterback, right? So probably Zach Wilson. So you want to play Zach Wilson with Garrett Wilson. So 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 you do that, and then you think, okay, so if I do that, what's natural? Well, you probably want someone on Jacksonville, right? Um, so who's a good dude on Jacksonville? Well, Christian Kirk or Travis Etienne or one of these guys, you know. So let's let's put take your pick. One of these. Okay. Um, if you start your lineups like this, you, you're, for example, like this is all very logical, but you're already just doing what like a lot of people. Okay. So, so you need to then, if you're going to do something like this, get really, really nasty with the rest of your lineups. But if you think about it another way, if you think about, okay, you know what, instead of playing Garrett Wilson with, with, uh, with uh, with Zach Wilson, which is probably what people are going to do. Let's play Garrett Wilson by himself. Okay, let's go for those variations where Garrett Wilson has a good game without uh, Zach Wilson. Is that likely? No, but 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 the amount of people that are going to put those two together is going to create an incredible glut of lineups like that where you could take a chance that something that's supposed to happen maybe doesn't. And in return for that, you get a quite a bit of uniqueness. Okay. And, and you continue to do this throughout. Like here's, here's like a, a real dumb example. So look at the tight ends from the Jets. All right. You have Conklin and, uh, and Uzuma, right? All right. I bet you some people are going to play one of those guys. It's, it's a raining day. It's a rain day, Right. You would imagine that there's not going to be that much downfield stuff. So it makes sense to play to play someone like Conklin, right? Because you look at his game log, he's got, aside from his last game, eight, seven, three, and three. But how many people are going to play Azuma? Well, there might be some, right? But you'd think that most people would play someone like Conklin. How many people are going to play both of these guys? I know your answer is well, probably some really stupid people, but remember it was stupid. It was Forrest Gump, right? Stupid as a stupid does, you know. Don't call me stupid. Who said don't call me stupid? Oh, that was from a uh, fish called Wanda, the Kevin Klein character. Call me stupid. Don't call me stupid when I'm doing something that three percent of the pool is doing. And and when when Tyler Conklin catches a touchdown and then Uzoma catches the touchdown, people are like, okay, sure. Well, then I'll be sitting here with this type of lineup. Maybe I won't have Garrett Wilson. Maybe I'll have something like then I, I'll maybe I'll have chalk everywhere else. Like maybe, I don't know, maybe in a lineup like this, I could just put put Trevor Lawrence in the captain, like play Etienne and then play, you know, Christian Kirk or whatever it is. And 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 there you go. You know what I mean? Because I was able to play these two freaking clowns in the same lineup that nobody else has okay, together. Is that optimal? Well, optimal is a funny word, right? Is is it is it is it going to score the most fantasy points most of the time? No, but but doing stuff like that um, can get you unique. Now, again, you have to kind of run that balance. You want me to get really unique? I'll tell you what I can do. So let's play. I, I got an idea. I, 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 I want to play C.J. Beathard in the captain. Wait a minute. Listen, I'll tell you this. If if What's his name? If, if Trevor Lawrence gets hurt, you know, I'm going to be very unique with C.J. Beathard. Okay, great. How often is that going to happen? You know what I mean? No, never. But the, the no, I don't say never, but the the the, the Conklin uh, uh, Zoma thing, again, I'm using this as an example, it's unlikely but possible. And unlikely but possible things, you know, happen. And in showdown slates where they're offering 500,000 per first for a unique entry, that's the type of stuff that you're going to want. Now, you can accomplish that different ways. You know, number one is by just forcing it in yourself. Or number two is just by running it through SaberSim. What SaberSim will do, again, it will 
it will assess how bad of an idea that is. In other words, it's going to tell you, it, it's not going to tell you, it's going to tell itself how bad of a lineup is going to, it's going to, is it going to be to have Uzoma and Conklin together? And it's going to rate that as a function of ownership, okay, and upside and things like that. So it's going to balance the this idea of getting unique with the idea of just making sure you at least have a chance to win. Right? So that's one thing Saberson will do for you is take your biases out of the game and build lineups based on the correlation data. And if you set it to like to be random and and to put you know ownership fade in, it'll do that for you. And I think the default settings do that anyway. Um, and so you can build kind of like kind of weird looking lineups that will offend your senses which is why you probably shouldn't even look at them, okay? Um, I know they tell you, listen, make sure you do a sanity check. I've done this for a while now with Saber Sim. I found it best to not even look, okay? Because you're going to look and you're going to say, use the same example. Well, I know I'm supposed to get unique, but I, I don't want to play Uzoma and, and, and Conklin together. I'm going to X those out. Okay, promise you I know what's happening next. I, I would literally, if you're going to use Saber Sim to do that, I, listen, I'm not saying just blindly put the lineups in, but I don't think that you should, on top of everything else that you're probably going to be biased about, put your football game script into the algorithm after the fact, okay? Um, I That's just not what I would do. A word about um, uh, leaving money on the table for a minute. Remember what you're you're doing by intentionally leaving money on the table is not coming up with unique. Well, you're coming in with unique lineups, but it's not because you have unique kind of combinations. It's kind of the unique uh, summary of the combinations. You know what I mean? Like what you're trying to do when you when you leave money on the table is try to make good plays and just kind of like confuse people you know what i mean like make the good plays but leave one of them out you know like so so you're the plays that you're making are going to be good but you're giving up the opportunity to make a better play to save salary hoping that other people will do this won't do the same thing giving you a unique not unique bill but kind of like sort of unique bill it's, it's a unique lineup uh, salary i guess that's the best way i can describe this so these two ways of getting different are just a little bit, they're not exactly the same thing, that leaving money on the table on purpose and doing everything else the same still gets you kind of the obvious type plays, but you're just sort of leaving some of them out, okay? Which is okay, because it's gonna get you a little less duplicated because not as many people are gonna do that. But I, I still feel as though getting the funny combinations is more likely to get you unique than just leaving money on the table. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, well, why don't you do both? Yeah, sure. You know, if, if you want to leave money on the table and get unique constructions, like if you want to play, again, to go back to the example, Zoma and uh, Conklin together and leave 800 on the table, well, I mean, now, I mean, listen, you're asking for it, but you're asking for it, right? You're, you're asking for trouble, and yet you're politely requesting the 500,000. Um, you know, even though you're asking politely, you're not always going to be afforded that, that 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 request. But there you go. So I guess we should kind of go through the plays. Okay, we're going to go through the plays, um, and then we're just going to do do some cool building. So for the Jets, you have Donovan Knight, who is obviously the main guy now for the Jets. Uh, he hasn't had the greatest of games, but he hasn't had the worst of games. He has been a full participant in practice. His last game was pretty poor, but aside from that, I mean. You have to imagine he's the main guy. Um, and in a, you know, in a rainy game, uh, you'd have to imagine they want to lean on him. So obviously he's a good play. Uh, I already mentioned Garrett Wilson, top pass catcher, and probably maybe in this game, but certainly for the Jets. Pairing with Jack Wilson, so Zach Wilson certainly makes a lot of sense. Um, other receivers on the Jets are, I mean, I already mentioned Conklin and Izoma. Um but the actual other plays, Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, those are all, you know, Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, I guess, safely the number two and three receivers. And if you wanted to get a little bit funny, you could go to Braxton Berrios, right? And Braxton Berrios, he's not in for as many snaps, but 
he's only 1600. So uh, the six targets, three targets, three targets. Listen, we're not talking about guys that are, <laughs> he hasn't scored 10 fantasy points the whole season. So, and it's a, it's a crappy weather game. So it's not exactly the greatest play in the world, but it's 1600, you know, if, if you get to him in your builds, you're, you're going to have to leave him in. All right. Um, uh, I guess that's it for the Jets, right? I mean, you can certainly play any of those guys. Uh, as far as ownership goes, I mean, I'm looking at Zonovan Knight being the highest owned guy right now. Um, actually, I have Zach Wilson being higher owned. Uh, and then I have Wilson under that just because of price. So I, I have between Wilson Knight and, 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 uh, and uh, the other Wilson. I mean, that, that's where most of the ownership of the Jets guys are coming in. So if you want to, if you want to fade Garrett Wilson and play Corey Davis, I guess that, that certainly makes some sense and hand built stuff. Um, I, the one thing that's interesting is I don't know exactly where the captain ownership is going to, is going to, uh, to come from. Um, I don't know who I would project to be the highest owned captain. Is it, I guess probably Trevor Lawrence, the Jacksonville side, which we'll get to in a minute. Or maybe Etienne, right? Okay, so speaking of which, uh, I mean, we could just pull up my projection and look at this, but I mean, this is give me a pool of 20 guys, and we're going to go for, over everybody, I guess. But Etienne's probably the best play. It's a crappy weather game. And even though they scored 40 against the Jets, I think they, against Cowboys, I think they would prefer to run the ball. So they're going to start with getting it to Etienne. But then again, the Jets defense is pretty tough. Overall, this, this whole game, you know, I mean, this could end up not scoring all that much. Um, Trevor Lawrence, I mentioned, uh, his top receiver I have rated is, is Christian Kirk. Um, and Zay Jones, I have them pretty much the same, actually. Um, so you play, you know, you want to build, make a hand-built lineup that's going to get duped. All right, we can do that. Let's do this. We'll play Trevor Lawrence in the captain. Okay, we'll put Trevor Lawrence in the captain. Then we'll do Christian Kirk and Zay Jones. We'll run it back with Zach Wilson. Oh, can you run it back with Zach Wilson? Sure, why not? You run it back with Zach Wilson, and then you punt these last two positions. I mean, you can do that. Um, uh, one of them probably being Braxton Berrios. You know, um, Jets defense, 3,600. So if you wanted to play like this, like just for example, uh, you play, where is he? Braxton Berrios, 36. And then you play someone at 31. Like, James Robinson, 2,200. You want to try that punt. You can play CJ, CJ Azoma. Like, here's an example. Okay, you take a situation like this, right? I just I just gave you two kind of fringy plays for the Jets. Barrios and Azoma, okay? Um, this lineup will be owned, like, by 70 people, minimum. Maybe more, you know? So it's not so easy, you know what I mean? Just take Lawrence, pick these two guys. Run it back with Zach Wilson who makes sense. And then Barrios and, and Azoma seems like you're being really different, but this particular lineup I think is going to be pretty owned. All right. Just because of how quickly I was able to make it and leave only a hundred on the table, whatever. Um, Evan Ingram makes sense also from Jacksonville. Sure. Marvin Jones. I mean, all these guys, I guess the two guys I may as well talk about that are showing up in my projections. I mean, aside from, again, I mentioned Azoma, I mentioned um, Conklin, but I'm getting some James Agnew, and somebody in my Discord channel asked me to look at him too. Let's take a look at this. I mean, in fairness, he's got three targets, three, three, one, five, four. I mean, this is, I mean, the more I'm like staring at this, this this actually could be chalk. And, uh, this this could replace the, Brest, the, the Braxton Barrios or Azoma play. In, in those builds I just kind of created. So, yeah, I think that Azoma, that Agnew at the end of the day is going to be high up. That's going to be my, my guess. But, listen, shh, nobody talks about it. Maybe people won't realize it. Maybe it'll be just be the dude from our Discord channel and me and you guys, and no one else will think of this. Well, perchance to dream, uh, the other guy that I would mention uh, from the Jacksonville side, who's who's gotten some couple of couple of uh, of carries, and you do have some obvious, you know, some injury possibilities, is is Jamichael Hasty. Um, he had one rush. He had four rushes. He had a he had a target. 
And oh, one, two, three, four games ago, right? He 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 smashed. He had five targets for 20 fantasy points. So I think that he is completely in play. And the more I look at this, maybe he's going to be chalk. I mean, listen, if you want to play these top guys, you have to come up with something. And you see the 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 the, the game log on Agnew and Hasty. I think both these guys are extremely logical. Um, so that's that's what to expect from the slate. Um, kickers and defenses certainly make sense on a slate like this. They're both under 4K, the defenses. I think the kickers are a little more fishy because it's cold and wet. Um, but in a low-scoring game, you do want to have access to these things. So what did I do? I, well, I talked about everybody, okay? So so what, what does that mean to the average man? What it means is we have to do some funny stuff with lineup construction. So what I want to do is I want to, I want to run a Saberson build and see – what I can do or what it does for me. And then I'm going to screw around with it a little bit. But as I'm doing this, I'm, re I'm really kind of into the, the last two guys I mentioned, Davey Agnew and the Jermichael Hasty. I think those guys I might, I might end up forcing in if I don't get to them anyway. All right, so let's do it. Let's, let's upload this. Okay. Oh, it's not this one. No, we're going to update. Sorry. Gonna upload um, this sheet. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's build. Well, hold on. What's in the flex? I guess what's in the flex here. Two percent ownership. There. Okay. So let's build. Um. Oh, want to build, build fifty? We'll set it for one hundred fifty max. Let's build one hundred fifty just for funsies, see what we come up with. I did not do anything with the salary, you'll note, right? So let's just take a look and see what we get. No salary constraints, restraints, let's see what we get. So we're getting, first of all, you'll see in the captain, we have 16 different captains. And I think on a slate like this, I think that's very reasonable. <laughs> um, what about the flex? Zach Wilson, really high owned. Well, where's my other dudes? Where are the guys I was talking about? Where's the Azomas? Where's the, dang, there's some Agnew, but only 5%, only 2% Hasty, only 1% Uzoma, only 5% Berrios. Man, that stinks. How about, how many Linus with Uzoma? And there's no be none, right? with Zoma and uh, Conklin. Let's see. Let's look at the Conklin lineups. Let's see. Can we get any Conklin with, with um, no. So there's no Conklins with Zomas. Well, that's, that's annoying. What about Conklin with like Agnew or something like that? Or Conklin with Barrios. Well, Conklin with Agnew. Yeah, we're getting three lineups with Conklin and Agnew. I guess that's okay. So I'm a little, I'm a little annoyed, man. I really wanted more of these other guys. I might, I might go on tilt and, and force these dudes in. I think this is what you need on a slate like this. You, you the Agnews and the Hasties and the Azomas and the and the and, and the Conklins and the pairing of these two. How about, how about a Hasty and Agnew together? What, where where's that? It's that lineup. That's what I want. Let's get rid of Conklin. Let's see if we can't find. No, it's just the only Agnews are with Zay Jones and Elijah Moore. So you know what to do? Let's 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 go back. Let's um let's rebuild. And let's rebuild with um, a salary constraint. Let's say 49,200 just for fun. Huh? Let's see if that affects things at all. Before I go in and and, and, ma and manually put in Agnew and, and Hasty, which I'm I'm probably gonna end up doing. So if we do this, um, 49-2, uh, again, a whole bunch of captains, but at least it's more concentrated among the better guys, right? 
So Zonovan Knight, Wilson, Etienne, and Wilson. But it's getting, you know, it's getting some of these dudes. It's getting some Conklin captains. All makes sense. Not a lot of Trevor Lawrence captains, though. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence in 150 lineups only give me two. Interesting. Then the flex. Wow, Trevor Lawrence is getting almost no ownership at all on these builds. And I like that. See that this this is this is what I want to see. This has got to be good, right? If I'm running this with no the only salary constraint being 49-2. I mean, almost no, not almost no, but like less than 30% of Lawrence. That's a big deal. Oh, my God. Why don't they love Azoma or Hasty or Agnew or Berrios? Oh, we got to do some. Saberson's going, you know, they're, they're becoming chalk donkeys. Well, they don't want to win 500,000. Right? So, obviously, I'm being facetious. But, um, listen, this build is way under the field on probably the highest projected you know, probably the best play on the slate, right? Isn't isn't Trevor Lawrence honestly the best play on the slate? I and mean, I know that the running backs project maybe a little bit better, but I mean, Lawrence, I would imagine, is the best play. And I'm only getting him at 25% ownership. Um, boy, it beats me. Um, okay, so that's kind of the deal. I'm going to – I hope I wasn't too cynical or whatever it is, but in, in, on a slate like this, like, which are basically all showdown slates, that's the really the way you have to think about it. And I, I might very well just do what I said. I might put in just for the hell of it, like five lineups with both, you know, depends how many you play, like 50 lineups, maybe five of them with both Conklin and Azoma. You know, good luck somebody beating me if that comes in. How about that? Okay. And in those lineups, by the way, I'm not setting a salary constraint. Okay. Because I don't want that perfect nut lineup to happen. And me not have it because that happened to make the 50,000, which no one else will have. So in those types of builds, I'm not going to put salary restraints out there. But in the regular builds, I I, I, I probably might. Okay. I just want to just double check one other thing. So this other build where I had a, I didn't have a salary constraint, did that also get me under on Trevor Lawrence? Let me just double check. This one got me with no salary constraint. Got me was with one percent at captain and thirty eight. So I only so eleven percent of my lineups were 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 dumped because of the salary constraint on what's his name on uh, on Trevor Lawrence. But interestingly, I'm getting very little of him in, in captain, which is um. I have a feeling that's going to make me different. And I'll tell you this, like having like all these different captains, that's got to make me different as well. And, and don't think that any of these guys can't do it on, on, a, on a night like this with this weather. Anything is possible. Um, okay, uh, that will do it. I, I encourage everybody to join us for a lot, our live lineup build at like seven or so. Um, and who knows, maybe we'll do a live sweat as well. A little bit. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck tonight.